Kane has had 17 violations. Something's got to change. Is that clear? Sure. I'm sorry for the way we started off. I really like talking to you. Hey, how's that rash, buddy? Ethan, I'm going to start with you. Uh, this is your feature debut. I'm curious, what was it about this subject matter that made you say, I want to, this is what I want to make as my feature debut? When I first wrote the script in 2012, I was recently out of college and saw how much influence fraternities have on college campuses. And I wanted to tell a story kind of about the way in which we as Americans tend to value institutions over the lives of our neighbors. I wanted to make a movie about fraternities that portrayed them in a, in a different way than we're accustomed to seeing. From when you guys all started working on the script to what everyone just watched on screen, how did the story uh, change in development, if at all? I feel like the story changed, I mean, uh, scenes changed when we stepped on set because uh, actors make a movie better if you allow them to like improvise a bit here and there. And uh, so I, I think that the structure of the story pretty much stayed the same throughout, but uh, as time evolved, we like, or as time progressed rather, we rewrote it every year to try and improve it. For you guys, um, what was it like reading the script for the first time? And was it one of those things where you're like, oh, I need to do this? Um, yeah, reading the script the first time was interesting. I had a, I had some sides from a few years ago. I got a very early version of it and had the chance to read a little bit, but this was five years before we actually shot it. And when it came back around, the script had changed a good bit from what I can remember. Ethan and Alex were tracking actual current events as well and letting that kind of enrich the script is to try to add to, to the reality that we were creating there. And he was uh, very trusting of us, the actors on set and the whole cast and crew, let everybody do their jobs and help them do that to the best of their abilities. And it really made a difference on the days, especially. There were times we were allowed to kind of just explore the scene. And I think we got some good, uh, some good stuff out of those opportunities. So what do you think, man? <laughs> uh, to me, it, the whole story has uh, a lot of guts to it. Um, you know, it's, it's not the... Um, necessarily pretty aside of things. And I really love that, I mean, about this whole project, really, is that it has, has a lot of guts. A lot of people in this room know how the sausage is made in Hollywood. So what do you think might surprise them to learn about the making of this film? We wrote the first draft in, in 2012 and then cast it in, started to cast in 2018 and finally got the money to make it uh, at the end of 2021. It's just a long process. And um, uh, some other, I, we recorded a lot. We, I recorded probably uh, over 100 pages of ADR. Ted, our amazing editor, who's out there, and uh, our sound mixer, Skip, who's absolutely incredible and a legend, were able to integrate into the cut with me to make it um, feel loud and like people we're talking over each other and stuff. We flipped the bar scene, that last scene with, with me and Alex around. It was originally had a much different tone and a, a tricky part there as well. Is, I think that was that was my like first day of shooting and that was the end of the movie. So I uh, did a lot of character development and, and built that arc across the actual shooting of the film, right? So and when it came to doing that the first day, kind of, you know, we realized to jump the gun a little bit with where the characters should have landed. And thankfully we were able to fix it a little bit in ADR. Um, but yeah, stuff like that's always tricky, you know? I think as well the amount that like Ethan let us, um, you know, improvise things. And uh, I mean, that's a lot of times my favorite kind of filmmaking is uh, when you're working on something and it feels like it's always, it's kind of changing. And the director is, um, I think, brave enough to to let it change, you know, to let the actors come in and, you know, kind of have a say and, you know, and that kind of on the spot collaboration. That was a, uh, I suppose, a great, a great part of it that I loved. We shot it in 17 days. It was a very, very tight schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Bo, what was your reaction when you found out that uh, John Malkovich and Denise Richards were going to be playing your parents? Yeah, I was, I was stoked. Uh, <laughs> Thought that was a great combo. Really, honestly, in in real life, the answer to that is I was just 
honored to get to work with them and see their process. That was amazing. Uh, they're both obviously professionals, and uh, they they really took a lot of care with their characters in the scenes and the script, and even though they had one or two scenes in the movie. I remember John came in with a ton of awesome notes, and we had a little bit of a rehearsal on the top of the day, and that was just like a you know 15 minute master class he's a powerhouse and and getting to see some of that was just uh, an amazing opportunity for sure Ethan talk a little bit about uh you got some uh, you put together a great cast um but you also got some faces like some famous faces who were willing to do like a day on the film how did that come together like how did you pull John or Scoot you know what I mean I mean, at the end, they're all busy, and so I feel like they would have to answer it, really, but um, I think it was kind of like a used car salesman kind of like pitch combined with like getting all these other amazing actors to agree to do it, so it seemed like it'd be worth their time. We shot everybody, we shot all the rest of the movie at the beginning of 2022, and we shot John's stuff out at the end of 2021 to accommodate him, because he's great. I'm fascinated by how actors uh, prepare to step on set. For, so for both of you in this project, can you talk about what you did, what you were reading, what you were watching to sort of enter the headspace of who you were playing? I want to thank Ethan for being there, working with me very diligently months before. He sent me a ton of movies to watch, some that were surprisingly very hard to find. And I took a lot of inspiration from... Jack in The Shining in The Last Detail, Pyle in The Full Metal Jacket, and Pesci in Casino, and De Niro in Taxi, Taxi Driver, stuff like that were the things that he sent me, and he gave me little tidbits to pull from. remember him telling me to watch what Jack does with his eyes and and uh, certain things like that, and to think about the tenacity that Pesci has in his characters, and it gave me these points to harp on. For Mitch, after that, it was a lot of me pulling from some of my personal experiences being from South Carolina and living most of my life there and thinking about people I've ran into over the years that maybe resemble my character or people that surround my character and and finally to get into the into the situation of actually being a fraternity brother I, I have a dear friend of mine who is a victim of sort of the culture that happens in the fraternity realm kind of what you see here and, and um and he, he sadly passed away a few months after the, the movie was, was shot. But he opened up and was very vulnerable to me about his in, insane experience. And, 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 you know, he'll always be remembered as a, as a beloved friend and son. But he was a great guy, but he went through a ton. And so I, uh, I pulled a lot from those notes for him, for Mitch. You know, for Gettys, it was, uh, you know, there was, there was another part that I was meant to play. So there was already work going on with the script, but also mainly the life uh, of these kinds of guys, you know, of visiting kind of um, University of South Carolina and getting to spend time with, um, with these guys, you know, and then, and then developing the character and where the person's from and just as much as you, uh, as you can. And then also the relationships with all of the guys, you know. Um, I think there's, you know, there's a certain way that we worked in which uh, a lot of the relationships are uh, kind of real, um, what you're seeing, um, in the way that we uh, worked and interacted with each other, like, during the time. I was trying, I was thinking today of, of trying to break it down, because when you're, when you're in it, you know, you, you're not really, there's some, there's only certain things, I suppose, that you, uh, a, a character knows or what have you when you're doing it. I think something that everyone can relate with of, of really wanting something, wanting to be in this thing, uh, in this fraternity, and wanting the connections that come with it, and then what then you need to do to get that thing. And I think a part of this was, um, um, you know, his soul. He was... Um, you know, a disturbance, I suppose, in his soul to some degree, you know, of doing things. You, you had to become less than to get the thing that he wanted, um, which then becomes obviously a struggle. Um, so. Can I also, I just want to add, so Mason, uh, who's in the movie, and Nick Basile, who's in the movie, who plays Frank Vitti, Alex Wolf and I met at the University of South Carolina uh, when we were prepping. They were in a fraternity, SAE, 
And then we uh, spent time with them, told them about the movie, explained the messaging, and they chose to be in the film despite it, which reiterated to me that I was m doing the right thing by making this movie and that kids generally join fraternities because they want to fit in, not because they necessarily agree with any of the fraternity's messaging. Um, and Austin also had an opportunity to go to that fraternity and go to their semi-formal in preparation. And then we used, for instance, their pledge uniforms, which are, were uh, at University of South Carolina, hard hats, white polos, khaki pants, Velcro shoes. And so details like that were pulled directly from uh, uh, these kids' lives who are in the movie. Can I, sorry, one second, I just want to be quick, thinking through all this, me and Austin didn't talk the whole time we were on set. We we met each other, realized who was playing what role, we had dinner, and then we didn't talk for, you know, two or three weeks, and it's weird. I feel like we're just now kind of becoming friends as, you know, years later, because we, we were in social circles. There was a lot of method work going on at multiple levels, so we, we didn't communicate at all. Um, there was a lot of stuff like that happening, too, that really helped uh, bring the characters together and keep it consistent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ethan Berger, Bo Mitchell, and Austin Abrams. Thanks, Thank brother. you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you, guys.